We're back in the lab today, and I just wanted to make a quick little video about a modification I made to these little eBay $16 constant current battery capacity testers. These things are pretty cool. For 16 bucks, it's unbelievable what you get. These little things right here, you can set the current draw, you can set the voltage to finish, and they will run by themselves and shut off and give you an alarm and show you what the amp hour capacity of the battery is. Very cool. For 15 bucks. It's adjustable. If you want to know more about these, just look up constant current uh, battery tester, 60 watts on eBay. These things pop up all over the place for 16 to 25 bucks. The only problem that I had with them is that on the constant current draw, it was not very accurate. Sometimes, like for instance, on this one, I have it set to 900 milliamps. And if you would check the current draw on it, it would be off sometimes as much as 50 milliamps, which uh, when you're doing a 20 amp hour uh, test, then that's going to throw your numbers off at the end. And uh, what I was doing was correcting for that uh, with the calculator. Because I would, I would verify what the current draw was with the flute, and it was uh, annoying to sit there and have to go and uh, at the end when you would, right now, when you would finish your test, it would show you what the what amp hour capacity the battery was, but that test was not correct. It was slightly off because when the tester thought that it was drawing 900 milliamps, it was actually drawing, sometimes some of them would draw 935 milliamps, 950 milliamps. It depended on the tester. I have a bunch of these things. Uh, we test a lot of batteries around here and we like to run them. I have some quick testers, the BK602 and some other stuff. But ultimately, the BK Precision Testers, those are good for quick testing. But if you've got batteries that have been out a couple of years and you want to find out what's going on, the best thing to do is a real 20-hour test. And so, and also when we buy brand new batteries, like this PowerSonic battery, I particularly like this brand. These things seem to last usually five or six years. As soon as we buy them, the first thing that we do is top off the charge, let it sit and then do a baseline test. Uh, this battery was, is, is brand new. It hasn't been out yet. Did a baseline test after topping off the charge. It's at 106%. Power Sonic. These things always do pretty well and they last a long time. So we have a baseline. This way, if, if down the road, either near or far, there's a problem with this thing, we know that it at least started off right. We've had a couple of batteries come in, and thanks to poor handling by UPS or FedEx, the batteries were damaged and uh, they didn't perform up to spec, and we were quickly able to change them. So what I did to fix this problem with the, um, the inaccurate current draw, and like I say, 50 milliamps, it's just enough that if you really want to note uh, an accurate capacity on the battery, you have to go back and redo the math. You cannot trust this because the true current draw, even though you had the tester set to 900 milliamps or whatever, was off. And the reason it was off was because of this guy. They've got this shunt. This is the current sensing shunt right here. And this is supposed to be, let's see if we can see it. As you can see right there on the pad, it says 10 milliohms. I think what the problem is, 
is depending upon how deep or how much solder rises up the pad when they install this shunt and the, the precision of this shunt, it's off slightly. So instead of being 10 milliohms, it's something else. And that's where we're getting our variation. So I went ahead and got some resistors from Ohmite, some actual uh, 10 milliohm resistors, 1%. Uh, I calculated out that 2 watts would do it. And so this is the first one I just did this morning. See if we can get that thing to dial in, as you can see right here. I put the resistor in, and I did my first test. And focus up, little baby. There we go. And it's vast improvement. This thing gets right down. Once the resistor warms up after about five minutes, the it's right at about 902, 904 milliohms, or milliamps. The value of the... Uh, The um, the the tolerance on the resistor is one percent. So at nine hundred milliohms, you'd be expecting nine hundred milliohms, a uh, plus or minus a uh, nine milliohms. And as you can see right now, we're at nine hundred and four milliohms dropping down and as it warms up it'll get down to about 902 milliohms and I had it running for like 30 minutes and it was dead on at 900 milliohms so problem solved uh, there's the old shunt right there let's get some focus going here there's the old shunt that I took out There's the new resistor. There's the number. This one's going to get the same treatment as will all the other ones. And look at that. If we let it run about five more minutes, it's going to go down. And it'll be next time I'm testing uh, batteries. I won't have to do the math afterwards to uh, make the correction for the inaccurate current draw. I hope that this helps uh, some of you guys that have this same battery tester and maybe have wondered why the heck uh, the current draw was slightly off. Well, it's because of that, sh that current shunt right there. I'll see you guys with something new on the next video.